Hey agency CRMers, we've got a great new feature for you. So now you can collect tax if that's something you need to do within the jurisdictions you're selling into. We're gonna get into the details in a minute, but first, do you even need to charge taxes? That's something you'll need to ask your tax preparer for. Ask them if, you know, tell them what you're selling. Uh, you're probably either selling a SaaS, meaning like just reselling licenses, or you're selling services, meaning agency services, social media services. Um, so those are different product codes. You'll need to ask them if you even need to do this. You probably don't, but you know, if you do, then keep listening because we have a really cool integration with Stripe. What you're allowed to do now is on a per pricing plan basis, turn tax collection on or off. Within each pricing plan, you can determine what kind of product are you selling. You might have a price uh, a pricing plan that's only SaaS. Well, you can collect taxes based on that. You might have a product that is um, primarily used for agency work. If that's the case, you can use that product code. Then our system is smart enough to look at the address your clients are entering and it will charge them tax based on the local rate where they live for the product code that you are selling in that particular pricing plan that they're buying. Very, very cool. That way you're not overcharging anybody. Everything is fully automated and everything is compliant. I absolutely love how this turned out. It took us a little longer than we had hoped, but let's dig in. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do to set this up is go to your pricing plans. So you see we have three different pricing plans. Uh, we've got Junior, which is SaaS only, and then we've got these other two where we add some services. I'm um, just giving you an example. Um, if yours is similar, let's set one up where it's gonna be um, SaaS only. I'm gonna edit this pricing plan, and you'll notice down here, charge tax for this plan. I'm gonna check that box. And notice you have setup instructions. Before you go any further, click this, because you've got other work to do. Now this is gonna take you to our article and our knowledge base on how to set all of this up. The important, well, you're gonna to wanna to go through the entire thing, but I'm gonna kinda of skip through to the important parts. Um, so what you need to do is jump into your Stripe dashboard. This should look familiar, this is your settings. But wherever you are, at the very top nav, these never change, the ta top nav has something called more and tax. First thing you wanna do is go there. Um, this doesn't really matter, uh, but I would choose software as a service. The reason it doesn't matter is we don't care about your default. We're gonna allow you to determine what the product code is for each different price plan specifically, so you're not gonna to have to use a default. Scroll down a bit and you're gonna see tax, re tax registrations. This is another conversation you'll wanna have with your tax preparer. Just know that you need to have at least one tax registration before our integration will even function. Otherwise, it'll just fail. Um, so you'll wanna add a registration. And it's as simple as you know choosing where you're gonna be doing this, uh, wherever your tax preparer tells you to do it. And um, they make it super easy on Stripe. They handle it. And once you add each of these, I've got a couple of sample ones here for the entire United States and all of Canada. And it only took me a minute or two to do it. Uh, next thing you want to do is scroll to the very bottom and enable automatic tax calculation. Once this is done, you're going to want to set up webhooks. So go to search and enter webhook, and it will find developers webhooks. Just click that. So I've already got a um, test URL in here, uh, but you're going to want to enter the specific one. So we're going to add endpoint. And for the endpoint URL, this is provided in this knowledge base article. So go down to add endpoint and grab this endpoint URL here. Copy it exactly. And you're gonna paste that. And for description, this really doesn't matter. You can just say tax collection. You wanna cl click this box, listen to events, and then you're gonna select three events. The first one, um, go to checkout, and under checkout, you're gonna say checkout session completed. And don't worry, it tells you about these over here. Um, the other two are an invoice, and you're gonna check the box by, um, let's see here, invoice payment failed and invoice payment succeeded. 
and I'm going to click Add Events. Let's make sure that matches up over here. So invoice pay payment succeeded, invoice payment failed, and checkout session completed. That's it. That's all you need to do in Stripe. Now we need to go back to Socialmonials, and um, you know, for white label folks, I'm going to change this, even though. You really shouldn't include this in your knowledge base. This is information that is only going to be used by you um, as the agency owner. So I wouldn't include this in your white label knowledge base. But um, I'll probably just change this to in our system or something more generic. Um, edit the first pricing plan where you want to collect taxes. So this is where it gets easy. Um, we've made it super simple. So there's only a couple of options here. The first question is, does the price already include tax? And you got to choose yes or no. So basically, if you want to advertise $99 a month and you don't want your clients that are in the tax zone to have to pay a different amount, you want to pay for that tax for them. So that'll come out of your $99 and reduce the amount you get. Then you're going to say, yes, I'm a good guy. I'm just going to pay it for them. If you are a normal person, you would want them to pay. And I suggest you be normal. So choose no. Um, charge them tax. If they're in that area, that's something that um, they're used to. They have to do that with every supplier. So I advise you to always choose no and don't pay the tax for them. Um, the tax code, we give an example here. This example happens to be what SAS is. And since this is a reseller plan, um, I'm going to, of course, verify this with my CPA. Um, but if you click this here, you'll see a list of all the tax codes. So just see where your product is. He might say, oh, you're general services because you're doing agency work. Um, but software as a service, I'm going to take this. And this is case sensitive. So don't get fancy. Don't try to capitalize the T or it will not work. Um, so copy that and paste it down here. Beautiful. And be sure to switch on your activate pricing plan if it isn't already. And then you're going to click save. So here's what happens. After you add your first pricing plan uh, that has tax collection switched on, it changes the way all of your pricing plans work, even if they don't collect tax on those other pricing plans. The reason we do that is just to keep it consistent across your entire account. Now you're going to be using Stripe Checkout. So the normal payment page that you're used to is now going to be hosted at Stripe. It's a secure Stripe hosted um, system where it's going to be prompting them. Here's where it differs. If you have a pricing plan, let's say the one I just set up, once you register, get through the registration page and get onto the payment page, if tax is switched on, it's going to prompt them to enter their physical address. Once they enter that address, it's going to automatically run that calculation, figure out what the tax is for them, and automatically insert them uh, insert that within their checkout and it's going to give a separate line item so they can see that they're being charged VAT or tax or resale, whatever are the um, uh, like resale tax, whatever it is for your jurisdiction. It's going to show them that's what you're doing. So everything is very clear. Then it will total it out for them and charge the correct amount. However, if you switch that on for this plan and somebody tries to buy the social, uh, the senior social media manager plan, well, you're not collecting tax on that, but it's still going to use that same Stripe checkout. But what it's not going to do, it's not going to ask them for their address because it doesn't need to. Every time you ask more information, you will see a reduction in your conversion rates. So we are going to exclude the address block if you're not charging tax for that particular plan. Um, one other thing I want you to be aware of is things are handled a little differently when you move into the tax collection. Once you start collecting taxes, we actually have to generate a um, Stripe subscription within Stripe. Normally we handle everything. Like when the 31 days goes by, you know, when it's the same time next month, we reach out to Stripe and we charge them one time and that's it. There is no subscription plan sitting out there in Stripe waiting for the month to go by and then charging automatically. We manage everything internally. So what's gonna happen now is we don't manage that anymore. We send an API request out to Stripe. We set up a subscription for you on your behalf. So it's sitting there on that customer card at Stripe. So when you delete a client 
Or if you go in, let's say you have a client that already has it switched on for charge for access. Let's say that client no longer is going to pay. So um, because they told you they want to go a different way, right? So you're going to switch this off. As soon as you do that, we are going to send an API request to Stripe asking them to delete that subscription. However, I want you to make sure it works. So I want you to go to Stripe, make sure, because it's very critical that you don't keep charging that person. Go to Stripe, search for the email address of that particular client, and you will see their customer card, and it will have a big green subscription saying that it's actively going to collect and it'll tell them the next date that you're gonna, it's gonna collect for you. If you see that green thing, delete it. And that's where it's gonna prompt you, do you wanna refund or not? Default is it's not going to refund anything. And we certainly don't refund when we automatically delete it. Um, so if you wanna refund them, that's where you would do it. Um, if you delete this entire workspace, for example, it should also go out and delete that subscription. But again, go out and make sure, just so you can be absolutely certain um, until you're comfortable that the integration is working well uh, for your organization. If you guys have any questions at all, please reach out. I hope you enjoy this. And um, certainly where this is a compliant necessity where you live, you know, I'm sure you're gonna appreciate this. Um, but for everybody else, if you have any questions, ask your tax preparer. If it's a technical question, reach out to us in chat and we would be happy to advise you. Um, obviously we can't give you any tax advice. We're not licensed for that, but uh, appreciate your time and hope you enjoy this new feature.